take off your shoes before you set foot on the Berber. How to top out a house the right way. Now, you've seen the video that we did for the rough. You've seen the video that we did for the slab. Today, we're talking about a top out. I wanna show you how houses are built, how they're topped out, how the plumbing goes in from underneath all the way up. And that's what we're gonna do today. So if you've never been here before, do me a favor, subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on anything. And if you have been here before and you like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up and share this video with somebody that you know that may wanna know how to plumb a house. So topping out a house is one of the most important things. You wanna make sure you get everything on the wall. You wanna make sure you get your nail guards on so people don't have leaks later. But also, it makes it better when you're coming back and setting your fixtures and doing everything at the end. Now those of y'all that remember the video that we did for the rough where I told you it looked like that there was just a line stubbed up for a clean out. This clean out would actually clean out right to the main, right outside the front door. So what they'll do is after the sheetrock is on, after the walls are done, cut it off, put a plug on it. That way the plumber or homeowner, if they want to clean out their own sewer, can actually come out, take out the plug, run a machine in here. It'll go over to the main, out the front door, and get the line cleaned out. So this is good if there's a clog in the front of the house, somewhere between the double clean out and the, the edge of the house, somewhere there at the very front. If the entire house is stopped up and the plumber does not want to run a machine back towards the house, this is a great spot to go in and take care of it. So anyway, let's go ahead and step on in the house. Make sure you stay till the very end. I'm going to show you a couple of things that I think they do great, that is smart, and every homeowner should have in their home. So here we are out in the garage. Remember I told you about where the water heater probably was. So here's your line stubbed out for the water heater. You've also got condensate drains there to go outside. So I'm assuming that the HVAC system's going over here too. That way it's got a condensate drain to go out. Now you've also got possibly a laundry sink, a mop sink, that could even be a hub drain for a water softener or anything like that. Right here, you've got your gas. Now you've got dual outlets, three quarter inch. The only thing I don't like about it, they've got one inch drop down on the side here, then they go to a one by three quarter reducer. I would go ahead and run one inch all the way out, just in case you ever go a higher BTU tankless water heater and you need more gas there. Depending on what the load calculation chart on the house is, you may want a bigger line here because you may need to increase the size of the meter to get more gas to this water heater. So I really do like that. One thing that I don't like, they've got three quarter inch lines here. Now, we know that they stubbed one inch in because we, we've seen it, but they go to three quarter to go to the water heater. So that means anything coming out of the water heater, not only have you reduced the flow restriction going in, and yes, I know three quarter inch copper is allowed, but if you look at the size of these three quarter inch fittings, those of y'all that have been here before, you've heard me talk about it. They are so reduced down, you're gonna create a flow restriction throughout the house. This is gonna be something that if the lady of the house is in the master shower taking a hot shower it's going to starve the hot water to her it's actually going to starve the hot water to everything all i say is if you're using pex in a house do me a favor and upsize everything that way your homer gets full flow at every fixture throughout the house just like they do with copper so remember the powder bath that we looked at where i told you it was probably just a toilet and they catch the lavatory off the vent this is it so we've got a toilet right here they'll actually cut that off Love my tiger fish inside cutters. Cut that off, mount the flange right there on the floor. Then they came up, put a sanitary tin, came over to catch the lavatory. Now, you see that they've also got the water lines in. Again, guys, this is one thing I really don't like. They go from three quarter to half inch here. Now, that half inch, by the time you reduce it, that's really about like a three eighths inch fitting. Now, they're only catching one thing on it, so it's not near as bad. I do like that. But my thing is, I would want to run three quarter almost all the way up to it. Again, flow and volume is a big deal to me. But I got to tell you, the, the arm looks good. They drilled it out, got the lavatory dead center. You've got the marks on the floor. So they got it right where they want it. This actually looks like a very good top out. Now the vent line goes all the way up, comes across, goes up over there. We'll look upstairs, see if they revented anything, if they tied in anything else, or if this vent just goes up all the way out by itself. Let's check out the kitchen. Okay, so remember the ice maker line that I told you? Well, this is where the water lines come down. You've got your hot and cold coming down. Again, they're half inch lines. I'm not really excited about that because you're catching an ice maker, but you're also catching a kitchen sink because these lines go down. 
So you've got your ice maker that branches off right here. You've got your hot and cold that go down into the loop that literally loop around, come underneath the slab, and come right up over here. Now the good thing about it is you're not having to fight the exterior walls. You're not putting water out there. You're literally, you've got everything right here. You've got your drain, you've got your vent, you've got your clean out, you've got your hot and cold. So literally your hot branches off to two fixtures, your kitchen sink and your dishwasher. Your cold back here where the half inch comes down, catches your ice maker and then your cold side here. Again, guys, me, I would like to see it three quarter, but it is what it is. You can just create flow problems later. But other than that, look, everything hit the wall. It looks real good. This is a good looking rough. Okay, remember that three and two inch line we talked about? Let's go check them out, then we'll check the master bath, and then we'll show you what it looks like going upstairs. So remember the two and three inch lines I told you about? Well, the two inch line apparently catches the washing machine box right here, which is great. And then the vent reduces, goes up, goes across and then upstairs. The three inch doesn't catch anything down here. So what it does, it goes up, it turns out and catches the entire bathroom system upstairs. Now it's looped out over the garage. So we know that the bathrooms are out there and then you've got water lines up here in the ceiling too. As you can tell, the lines go up, go across and everything. So that's what these two lines catch. Again, I like this. You got your washing machine box. The only thing I would possibly like to see is maybe a Watts valve in here installed that shuts off in case of a leak. That way, the homeowner doesn't have any problems later. And right here, you've got your washing machine box there. This is a clean out. This is really good because if the clog is not in the P-trap, this can go down and catch the main, turn and come back over and catch anything that may be clogged up in the branch line. The more clean outs you can have on your jobs, the better it is. And I think that's part of what makes for a really good rough end. Now, let's go check out that master bathroom. Remember where the leak was? Oh shit, this is gonna be a problem. So here we are in the master bathroom. We've got the toilet over here. I like it. Privacy stall, door on it. Nothing like being peaceful and quiet when you're taking care of business. Next, we've got the master shower. Now this is about like the master shower that I've got at home. You've got a three by three pan down on the bottom, and then you've got a seat or a bench on the side. Now I like that because I have a glass enclosure around it, and I, and I do, I enjoy that. You got a mowing shower valve here, and I like the fact that they have the shower head up high enough, you're not gonna have any problem. One thing that I do think they should have done though, is when you're doing something like this on a new house, go ahead and install a rain shower head above head. You can put a diverter in here so you can do that. Look, it's easy to do at this point, and to me it makes the house more valuable. Now we step up a little bit. We know that we've got the garden tub over here and we've got his and her lavatories here, which I really do like. One thing I'm not real sure about though is the piping. They've got the cold line coming in where you've got a branch off to the lavatory and another branch to the lavatory here, which is really good. But the hot line coming in, they've got three quarter inch coming in. They split to half inch. They catch the last lavatory. They catch the right lavatory, but then they've got a stub out down below that goes in up overhead and down here to the Roman tub. Now the cold line, they catch off of a three quarter line directly up here. I'm not sure why they ran that, but I didn't design it. I'm just looking at the way it was built. So again, one of my favorite things, the end of line clean out. Guys, this is huge. If a homeowner ever has a stoppage up under the house, you can run a camera through it, you can run a sewer machine through it, you can run a hydro jetter through it. This is something that to me should be done on every single house we install. Anytime you make multiple branches, try to put an end of line clean out on every one. It makes it easier on the homeowner. It makes it easier on plumbers in the future. This is one of my favorite things about the way they roughed it in and topped it out. This is a plumber who's thinking ahead in the future. What can I do to make this better on the homeowner? This is a smart thing to do. Here's another one of my things that makes this a good top out. I love the way they did their gas under the range. They've actually got the stub out here where the valve is there. Then they go back in the wall, come out directly under the range. That way you come out, put your regulator there and tie directly in. You don't have to have the regulator, your valve and everything else over there. They set it off to the side. That makes this so good for the homeowner. And then after that, They've got a T down there that stubs out. Now outside you've got a gas outlet for an outdoor grill or anything you may want to do out there. So here we are in the upstairs bathroom. You've seen the plumbing where it comes down below. So here's your toilet. I like the way that they shimmed it up. 
That way if they're pouring lightweight, putting tile down, anything they're doing here, they've got room for it there. Now the tub is not installed yet. They've got the drain line under there. Once the tub's installed, they can install the waste and overflow, hook the P-trap up and take care of it. Again, you've got a mowing valve here, hot and cold water for tub and shower. And one thing that I do like is how high they put everything. Look, I'm not a super tall guy, but at almost six feet, if I'm in the tub, I like that that shower's high enough that I don't have to squat down to get under it. That's a great thing. Got your water here for your shower, for your toilet, and then you come right out of the bathroom where the toilet is, where the door's locked. Then right outside of it, you've got a double lavatory here for washing your hands. A great thing to do. Now, I look at everything. Again, we've got three quarter inch lines. These sinks here, these lavatories here should have no water pressure problems at all. You've got three quarter right up to the last piece. You're not gonna have a problem. I think that's the way it should be done. So here I am in the last shower, actually upstairs. Come out of the shower, I've got a toilet and a lavatory here. So this bedroom actually has its own private bath. The thing that I like best about it is this wall is on an exterior wall. You've got nothing but attic space right here. So they insulated the pipes real well. The vent pipe goes straight up and out. Now I'm not sure what kind of problem they had. They cut the flange off. They cut the line coming up to the toilet. I'm not sure if they didn't have it vented properly. Not, not sure what they had done, but they, they've definitely done some work here. Uh, they're in the middle of it, this isn't finished. But anyway, just another house top out. Now remember I told y'all to stay till the very end. I was gonna give you one of my favorite things right here. Now those of y'all that saw the original rough heard me talk about I wish that they had put a valve inside the house. We know there's a double clean out outside to clean the sewers out. We know there's a valve out there by it in the valve box, but what if it's raining? What if it's wet? What if it's muddy and the homeowner has a toilet upstairs leaking they need to work up? They can actually come down here, open the access door, shut the valve, and that shuts off water to the entire house. Now this is also good for the plumbers in the future. If you're a plumber and you ever come here and you've got to work on a shower valve, you don't have to shut off the meter. You don't have to go to the valve box out front. You walk right into the garage, you pull the valve up, shut the water off, drain it down at a low fixture, fix what you need to fix, come here, turn it back on, and you're good to go. This is one of the smartest things any homeowner could ever do. So anyway, guys, you look around, look at what they did. This is actually a well put in job. The vent lines, some of them are revented, which is good. You want as few penetrations through the roof as you can do without just having to run a lot of extra pipe. But this is actually a good job. So if you're a plumber and you've seen the things that I've seen here, what do you think? Could they have done anything better? Are there any tips or tricks you'd give a homeowner roughing in a house, buying a new house, any things to ask for? I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.